Good evening, everybody. Hello and welcome. Welcome to our slightly less than regular uh, Tuesday streams. We're back on a Tuesday. Oh, you beat me to it. That was my line. <laughs> we're back. You can still say it, Evelyn. We can both say it. We both like saying we're back. But we are indeed back. Uh, apologies for the slight recess. Uh, we've been very, 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 very busy with lots and lots of different stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I will say as a quick aside, I sort of mentioned a couple of things about it on Twitter earlier on. Uh, I'll be honest, I just have kind of like dropped the ball a little bit in the last sort of few months and just haven't really had all the motivation in the world to do this stuff. So between that and then you being busy doing some newer job stuff, it's meant that the schedule we had that meant we could always fit it in on isn't always the case because sometimes you're just not here. Yeah, no, I a lot of people don't know, but throughout my entire time doing this kind of content, I have worked a 40 hour week, sometimes from home, sometimes in hybrid, a lot of the time going on site as well. Uh, not to dox myself, but I, I do work in a very uh, intensive sector of the engineering industry that requires me to be places and do things. Yes. So this is not, uh, there's a few people who still think it is, this is not our main form of income. No, and it <laughs> probably, I hope it probably never will be, because I could imagine the stress put upon yourself by trying to maintain some sort of thing like this for any length of time would be a killer, <laughs> essentially. So yes, I mean, it's one thing I think to always re-emphasise with any of this stuff, and it'll probably be something that comes up in the stream this evening or something. Anyway, but yes, do not set aside real world tangible goals to engage in this stuff. Yes, it's not worth it. No, uh, don't get captured. Your, the, your first, uh, the first duties to yourself. You know, you need yes. to survive. That's what we always try and tell people. But uh, some, yeah, you'll end up like AA. Speaking of AA, uh, someone did mention in the chat as well. We had a brief segment in his uh, Bowden stream, his cigar stream, which is. A slightly unwieldy four hours, but there's a comment that links straight to the bit, and I'll probably upload that in a couple of weeks anyway. I don't want to undercut his video. Yes. But there's a little segment, it's only a little six-minute segment about Bowden that I'm quite proud of, um, and we'll probably talk about him a smidge during this anyway. Um, yes, it's going to be a shorter one this evening because we we do have some research for some stuff, but I, what we've learned from some of the things we've done last time is keep our research close to our chest and wait for the right moment. Yes. Because that can sometimes make a difference. Uh, so... I, I will say before we proceed that the weather's been nicer. There's been a bit of spring in the air almost. Yes. So the sun the sun has been back and it's been quite nice. So those of you who tuned the, for the weather reports, even that's good news. Even that's a white pill. We're having good weather. We're having spring good weather. Good news, everyone. Good news, everyone. It was, it was actually so much sun today that you could finally hear the cheap black plastic that makes up people's gutters all expanding yeah, the, and creaking ah, in the, the sun. The creaking of the spring plastic. Yes. <laughs> but yes, before we get on, uh, we shall quickly do our obligatory shilling. Uh, yes. If you want to give us money for some reason, you can via Ko-Fi, which we won't get uh, anously taxed for in a YouTube sense or in other senses. Yes. You can become a subscriber on the Substack. Uh, there's a number of options to do that there, either in single installments or monthly, or the usual methods of for chats, or becoming a member there as well. Yes, we, we are still fully monetized somehow. <laughs> that's, that's kind of become a thing that I do, but it is true, and we'll be going over a little bit here. Uh, we're not going over this, but I'll, we will mention that we have done a smattering of the positive vision stuff before. Mm. Some of our mantras for surviving modernity are part of really our positive vision of keeping yourself sane. Uh, it is quite similar to some of that stuff. So do go check out the Substack if you like our written work and look at our backlogs because a lot of it is perennial. Yeah. Most of it is made to not age, basically, as much as possible. Well, it's, it's, it's something that you wanted to bring up on the stream because it's something we tend to talk about kind of offhand and kind of kind of disparagingly at times, but really a positive vision for the right. We'll pick up a history book of your favourite period and read about that. <laughs> well, there's a, a lot of people don't, they don't want to just look backwards. I mm. think there's a lot of things being stripped out from history in terms of values and realities that we can show people of like, look, this is, these are the tangible improvements that we want to achieve and we can prove that they are achievable because they have existed before. 
and that really is a lot of the kind of working of the of the ride. If you want mm. something as as well that's to do with um, kind of more of a positive vision in terms of the future, especially uh, Millennial Woes' speech from our No Moss London conference back in late 2022 is excellent. I yes. think it's aged beautifully. It is a, a a wonderful piece of work. So if you guys want to go and watch that afterwards, it's a very very good kind of a supplement. To what we're talking about here is uh, Millennial Wells' speech did in person. Gotta say, uh, quite a ballsy speech to make in person. So yes, there's well, quite I mean, a bit of stuff here. That's kind of the other side of the coin as well. If we were to describe fully what we want, yes, uh, some people might be very interested in listening to it, but not because they want to help you. No, but because they want to hinder you. Yes, and, the, there is that aspect of it too. And, and fundamentally. If we could talk openly and run a movement that demanded the world that we want with no sort of obstructions, yeah. then we wouldn't, you know, the problem would be solved. We'd already be there. The issue is that we can't even really get into the scope of properly treating a positive vision because we aren't in a position to. No, a lot of what the positive vision is has to be couched in different terms, let's say. But, um,. But we'll we'll get into it before we get too long in the tooth. I, I believe that the revolutionary right has an extremely obvious positive vision. It revolves around ending and reversing the enforced decline of the modern era and in re-establishing the bonds of tradition and traditional society dissolved by mass society. And the works I just mentioned kind of go into that a bit. But our first topic, to get right into it, because we have kind of broad topic areas here, is deatomization. It is the rebuilding of human bonds and human communities because the biggest casualty of modernity has been humanity. It has been the human condition and it has especially been human loneliness that has been the great outgrowth of the death of the old world and the bringing in of the new. Well, it's, it's almost directly a line from Ed K that every new intense technological development is another chip away at what's left of dignity. Yes. That each new development, each new specialisation, every new abstracted roundabout process that makes something was organic makes it virtual, synthetic. Yes. Manufactured. What, what is us and the world that was reflected back into us is no longer there. Because we don't interact with it in the same way. And I know it's very basic and simple. As you say, it's a very core part of whatever positive vision would be. The human vitalist relationships taking supremacy over pragmatic political ones. Yes. Yes, it is. And we have a, a very quick, I believe, uh, quote here from Alul. I hope this is the right one. Um, yes, this is the one. Uh, this is from Jack O'Loole's Propaganda. And this is just a quick kind of flavour quote about... He has done some of the best writing, I think, about the conditions of modernity in the abstract. Mm. Uh, Jack O'Loole is, is a genius, and he was the, uh, the thinker that inspired Ted, Ted Kaczynski, for those of you who don't know. Um, do you want to read this one? Uh, I would double-check that that's not the second one. Uh, no, 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 this is not the second one. Right, fair enough. Uh, this is the situation of the lonely crowd, or of isolation in the mass which is a natural product of present-day society in which both used and depended on by the mass media. Only when very small groups are thus annihilated, when the individual finds no more defences, no equilibrium, no resistance exercised by the group to which he belongs, total action by propaganda become possible. A law is discussing how the mass society makes propaganda possible, but an outgrowth of the creation of the mass society is just the removal of the natural bonds. Yeah. It is the creation of the lonely crowd. It is the isolation of people by liberating them from the old world, by liberating them from church and fealty, well, by liberating them from family. You know, you go to any large city centre in Britain that has like a, a main street shopping promenade, Yes. And say it's on a slight incline and you stand at the top of that and you look down at thousands and thousands and thousands of more people than have ever been in this one city ever before. And none of you are connected together by anything more basic commercial ritual. Yes. You know, that's it. That's what, that's what you and all these people have to identify each other as. You buy Nikes and I buy Adidas. 
We are not, you know, you are not part of a kin or a family or even a race or a people anymore. That's not recognised. Well, and that's not affirmed in it. Sort of rituals we perform. The only thing that you have in common with them is your consumers. So you find yourself amongst that mass of thousands of people alone. Yes, it's, it's the anti-human conditions you find when you find yourself in a city in many cases. What we and what the positive vision in this is in terms of deatomization is just rebuilding the community. Mm. It's living in a place where you know people who will look after you. It is that simple, but the fact that that simple thing is gone has been devastating. And we would, and our positive vision is to rebuild it. I, I would actually, I would actually maybe let's have a little bit of chat interaction here. Yes. How many people in chat, when they are in the pub, on their own? Maybe not on, you know, you're talking to people, whatever, blah, 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 the locals. How many of you would feel confident, leave a pint sitting there, go to the toilet and come back knowing it hasn't been touched? Yeah. It's, well, the, the outgrowth. Yeah. How, how many of you would, uh, would feel comfortable, like, leaving a pint unattended, basically, in your, in your local pub? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, do you think that the regulars would watch out for you? Uh, we've got a definitely not there. Uh, oops. But, uh, well, there's a quick couple of examples I just wanted to go through. There's not too many sources in this, but this one is always the one that gets me, is the fact that this is from uh, Wall Street Journal here, yeah? Yes. Uh, why so many middle-aged women are on antidepressants? And it just goes into the fact that um, 18 to 39-year-olds, uh, 1 in 10, um, and then it goes into the fact that... In fact, women over the age of 60 uh, have taken, was it, 12.8% of those over 60 and older have taken antidepressants in the last 30 days, and it's 25% have taken them within the last year. Yeah. So a quarter, a quarter, all women over the age of 60, we've covered this before, has taken antidepressants. And our vision is that this shouldn't happen. No. I... You shouldn't need to effectively chemically castrate your frontal lobe and control your serotonin to deal with the conditions that you live in. Well, women are, by their nature, more social animals. Yes. Revolution of mass and scale stands for the breakdown of all meaningful and positive social structures. Yes. And we, we were sort of talking about this before the stream, but quite literally, in a sense, you know, modernity arrives, women most effective. Affected, I should I, say. I, yes. Men can be solitary. Men can be part of sort of a machine or something that's more pragmatic. But women don't have the capacity for that. Not being something that is a, you know, a, a biological social animal in its most primary form as opposed to something abstract. Yes. Actually kills them and died. It, the, the whole point really is that we don't talk about the quote-unquote women question that much because women are naturally passive and they should be. Mm. They are naturally passive and naturally follow power. They naturally follow men. Uh, they, are, they, they are hamstrung in certain aspects by being, you know, biological baby machines, but they're also capable of creating life, so that's why people protect them. It's the basics, really. It's a woman is a woman. Mm. And because they are a woman, they are a woman. <laughs> It's it's hard to it's hard to put it more simple than that. But you you have to reduce the abstractions. Think about the fact that look, you have this class of people who are at the whims, abstracted from things like family, of of the managerial class of the state of the machine, and it has made them completely miserable. They are having their lives managed for them by this structure, and a quarter of them have to take have to take sad medicine I mean, because they can't stand go. it. Go look. And that's what we don't. This is what we don't want. Well, no, I was just this is this is this is what our vision is not. Go look at you know a group we have talked about time and time again, <clears throat> the tight knit groups of middle class women with no kids and too much time on their hands. Go and get involved in like earth stuff. They don't look and act like healthy people or happy because, people because because they are because they're you know behind something that is given the, the essence of being right-wing in media, people turn a blind eye to it. I think in the same sense with also the detransition a lot, maybe for different reasons, but these are people who clearly are not appeased by the modern world. They are just sort of being subjected upon by it, have taken some sort of form that makes that easy for them, and they run around politically activated because... 
Yeah. That's better than dying. Women were happier <laughs> in the traditional world. Women want a husband and they want children. That has been born out and when it's removed from them, this is what happens. Yeah. We are going to put this in reverse. We are going to give women back their husbands and they're going to have children and they're going to love it. <laughs> and the other aspect of this is, of course, the fact that, you know, not only were... Was the, I know it's going to sound like a really stupid way to say it, was not only was society more social, yes. but social interactions were, in a literal sense, more romantic, real. They were more meaningful. Yes. And they had a lot more... When you interact with someone more regularly, they have a lot more weight, you have a lot more familiarity. And really what we have is a romanceless world. It is, it is a, a world without intimacy. There's lots of different forms of intimacy. But what we're saying really is that the positive vision of the revolutionary right will actually create more and not less sex. Yes. Because actually the sexual bonds between people also, between men and women, have broken down. They have completely broken down to the point that nobody wants to have sex. And people had a lot of sex in the past. They had a lot of children. And they were very happy about it. Mm. It made them very happy to do so. And it makes them very miserable not to do so. Yes. I mean, I think part of the thing as well is we could maybe go beyond just talking about it in purely sort of sociological terms. But another aspect of this is, of course, the fact that there is just... There is frankly absolutely no energy put on women nowadays to have children. It no. isn't just rhetorical or moralising. You know, two, three hundred years ago, there was real, tangible reasons that go beyond just a rationale for having children. Yes, you didn't need to rationalise having children. It's what you did. Yes, ex exactly. And, my what, point. <laughs> and, and to be fair, without the and like hormone disrup disruption of something like the pill, it's something that people are still compelled to do. Is the pill something we don't talk about? There's another chemical restraint on women of modernity. They are on the pill, then they hit menopause, then they're on antidepressants, and mm. then they die. Yeah. And, they, and they never have to think about the fact that their life has had no meaning, and it is miserable. And we want to give people back to each other. That is, that is the positive vision of the right, that you will have somebody, and we will have each other. And in mm. modernity, we do not. It is that, it is that well, simple. I, I mean, to a certain extent, it's... It's turning around to large numbers of women and basically say, do you want to live like a tranny for the rest of your life? Yeah, it's, it's the whole point that people scream <laughs> at you, but every, every, everyone lives like a tranny now, I'm afraid. Like every, everyone's a weird victim of modernity, and we don't want that. We don't, we don't want people to be stuck as weirdos. Yeah, so <laughs> next time you see a woman who is sad, take her mobile phone out of her hand and smash it, <laughs> and then follow her home. And love you for it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, damn it, Emily. But that's, that's, and another point I want to make is that really a lot of it isn't personal preference either. We talk about the preference to have children. They don't have the conditions to have them. People, if we talked about before, they live in homes of multiple occupancy. They don't have any space, they don't have any room, they don't have any time. And a traditional society and a positive vision for the right is giving them that time, that space and that energy back to have children. Yes. Which has been robbed from them. And I, as the experiences I've had over the last year have shown me that... Uh, Women as a class, if presented that, would actually snatch your hand off Yes, in most cases. And I, th I think we could say as well that a large part of this sort of de atomization of the social breakdown is a consequence of the fact that they have no place within society because there is not a hierarchy for them to be part of. No. If, if women had it within themselves, sort of this innate knowledge that their place, you know, is to, in a sense, serve greater men, then there is no questioning. There is none of this nonsense about dating dialectic today. It's, it's not just all that. that shite. It's, it's just the people to, oh, yes, the women's place is in the home, blah, blah. Well, it is. It, 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 the thing is, that was removed from women and nothing was given to them. Yeah. We will liberate you from the shackles of your husband. Well, now I'm, now I'm lonely and I have no husband. Yes. Well, <laughs> and, and I'm saying in this, in a sense as well, that relates both men and women. Oh, yes. Women have a place in society in the same way that 99.999% of men have a preset place in society. That's just where you're supposed to be. And it's knowing that you're part of that great chain of being that gives you some kind of meaning. This is the other Alu quote. Um, this is about kind of people's place in society, but it's 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 one that you used in, again, I think, in your Vanguard. Uh, I'm you. not too sure. Let me check. 
In Western society, it is no longer sufficient to obtain a transitory political act, such as a vote. One needs total adherence to a society's truths and behavioural patterns, as the more perfectly uniform the society, the stronger its power and effectiveness. Each member should be only an organic and functional fragment of it, Perfectly adapted and integrated, he must share the stereotypes, beliefs and reactions of the group. He must be an active participant in its economic, ethical, aesthetic and political doings. What he's talking about there is mass society and the opposite of natural hierarchy, which is this totalising state of affairs we live in. You are being civically engaged, politicised, politically engaged. You are being built into not a hierarchy, but a mass. Well, yeah, it's... The way I've explained it to certain people, and I wrote in at least one of the pieces on the Substack, that the, 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 af- the amorphous kind of mass of people that forms could only be the consequence of a further developing, centralising system that organises an ever wider portion yes. of society. Because Alul explains that what happened was that we were <clears throat> promised individual freedoms. We were promised that we would all be individuals, but individuals don't work. No. They don't work in, in a society without a hierarchy there. So what has replaced the old hierarchies is a system of propaganda and of mental control in which you feel that you are an interchangeable unit within this system that must have the correct beliefs and must have the correct structure within yourself, otherwise you are rejected from it. But you have Within that, no certainty. You are not given a place. You are simply given the rules you must adhere to. A lack of place, yes. if anything. You are given the responsibilities without roles. Yes. And it, it is it is that, I think, that is very relevant with this a law well, quote. It's a very simple question to ask as well. as individuality for what purpose? Yes. And it is only when you are part of a group, and as brought up earlier on, particularly a small group, one with a strong and well-understood identity throughout it, operating within it you are given a responsibility that allows you to what i think has been referred to in certain places like a, a super individuality or supra individuality that not only are you part of the group but for a brief moment you are being chosen as someone to be elevated above it and initiated into something greater than it yes and it is only because of that base below it yes that that can happen um, thank you for the five pounds there, Lewis Shaw Moffat, and we you, we will tackle this question, but one will need a, a mystical English belief to bind your hope together with the essence of the ethics. Oops, sorry about that. I knocked the microphone there. With the ethic, with the ethic, as the essence of the ethnic spirit. But yes, we've talked about the fact that there will be king, and we will talk about later as kind of an addendum that there will be faith. Yes. The spiritual world is something that is a huge victim of modernity, and we'll, we'll get to a little there, bit of that later on. There will be no body such as parliament or even you know a court or an assembly the the nation the people are best represented in the single figure i mean yes not to not to go all mid-century german but there's a reason why it was ein volk ein reich ein fuhrer <laughs> the people governing structure and the man at the top who is the avatar of their will don't get that in Rishi Sunak in a cabinet, do you? Well, what it is, is it's a facsimile <laughs> of a king. And that is the way that all societies... This is why people talk about the past being fascist and all that. It's what all societies were just structured like. Yeah. All societies had a sovereign who was obvious, and his sovereignty was obvious. We now have hidden sovereignty. And we have hidden sovereigns. And the, the use of direct hierarchy, of open hierarchy, as opposed to the mass where everyone is expected to enforce it on themselves and each other, is much more honest. It is a much more honest way of working, and it gives people a lot more meaning. Um, a, a very quick source here, too, which is about the fact that just from... I, we keep using this as money, actually. I have some pretty good stuff in them, but the, I think the aggregate stuff, which is uh, kind of Mail Online as well. Mm. I think they are a Mail Online vertical is, in certain yes. ways. But um, workers in the 50s worked longer hours in tougher conditions and with less holiday. So why were they happier than we are now? Because most of them were men. Oh, it's not just that. Well, yes, most of them are men. It was a male <laughs> environment, but also... It's a clear, clear thing that people pr- prefer hard, meaningful work to easy, meaningless work. Yes. And the old world recognised that. The old systems of work were much better at providing people meaningful work. And they also understood that blacksmiths begot blacksmiths. 
The idea of heritability was not only implicit in ethnos, it wasn't only implicit in leadership, it was implicit in guilds and roles and life. If you are a blacksmith, your son is likely to be physic more likely to be physically capable of being a blacksmith. Well, there's also just <laughs> there's also just a cultural aspect to that as well. You know, being a craftsman who works with his hands with a very specific set of tools to create a final end item that he has turned from raw material into the end product is a lot more satisfying than being a machine operator and doing stampings all day. And furthermore, once you begin to abstract work and God forbid sitting in front of a computer all day filing emails and being an HR worker or something. How do you even begin to pass that on as a heritage to your children? Yes. How do you pass on your profession as a box ticker and an email sender? How do you pass on your meaningful skill set to your children if all you do is push papers around in a company of which you have no idea what it does? Hmm. It's... It is the fact that you you don't have meaning, so you can't pass on meaning either. And there is no default. There's nothing to people to fall back on. There's the idea, and we Woz's speech is good at this, because he talks about the fact that there will be somewhere for Mavericks to go. Mm. There is always the city. There is always the academy. There is always the place where the Mavericks go. But the Mavericks are the minority. Most people are not Mavericks. Most people will simply fall into what they do. Most people will never use their degree. Most people will work at Tesco. See, <laughs> this is probably something we should save for the end, but I would rather not get off it because I think the way you worded that there is actually quite important. You know, these people have no meaning of themselves. They have no meaning to pass on. What are their options for garnering meaning? If you are someone, as you say, who isn't a maverick, who isn't someone out there pioneering ideas or some new aspect of culture, art, then I don't think you've got a choice. No. I think your only option to garner meaning is to literally have something akin to like epiphany amidst a struggle. It's a, a lot of people choose to subsume themselves within political struggles and structures, though. Mm. That is what it's designed to do. The lack yes. of meaning, the stripping of meaning from your life is meant to make you find meaning within the surrogate activities of politics. That's why the substack's called anti-politics. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a fundamentally sort of, you know, we all like to bring up contradictions and paradoxes. You know, oh, let's own someone because we've pointed out some contradiction in their person from their worldview. But all of us are fools. Yes. Because what do we want at the end of the day? A world where people like us are not involved in politics. No. And we're deciding to be involved in politics in an effort to stop that. It's the same way of trying to vote yourself out of democracy. We have a sort of unfixable problem. And I think to some extent, there can really only start to be a new hope when a sort of generation of people is kicked out of comfort by literally watching people get black bagged in the middle of the night but that's maybe a story for a different day <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you for the $10 lamented guide for the super sticker and thank you for the $20 there Frederick 1483 I will make sure as well if there are any on uh, Ko-Fi we will make sure that they got read as well so uh, don't worry about that but there's some there's other couple of bits here I have as well or at least there's a, a few th things that were, are in your uh in your mantra surviving modernity, which is another one of our mantras, uh, these are quite relevant to what we're doing. But you, you talk about here how hierarchy is essential to cooperation. And human cooperation, in many cases, the high trust society has broken down because there's no certainty in hierarchy partially. Yes. It's broken down for many reasons. But for, for one of the reasons is that people don't know where they should be and they don't know who each other is in a shorthand sense. Yes, give me a sec. I actually something to this effect the other day relatively worded and i will grab i just need to it's uh... it's okay no I, I can keep covering here and the, the issue is that again people think that hierarchy is bad it's been an inverted value when people say hierarchy they assume it as a negative value they assume that this is something that presses down on people rather than something that gives them certainty because everybody at a glance likes to think that they don't want to be in a hierarchy, that they don't want a boss, that they don't want someone telling them what to do. Mm. But if you have no one telling you what to do, you end up on benefits in Uber Eats. Yep. You become an eternal child. 
uh, being an adult is knowing that you have to exist in a hierarchy. It is knowing that certain people are better than you at certain things, or at least are in positions above you for certain reasons. It's, it is making peace with the world. I've not quite <laughs> found what I was looking for, but I have found, of course, a very sufficient Davila quote. The people does not elect someone who will cure it. Someone who will drug it. <laughs> and I, I can't quite find the tweet I put out, but I made a point to the extent that it's, it's an utterly inhumane thing to strip away visible and explicit authority figures away from people. The recognition of authority and hierarchy is what makes us human. It's what makes any larger human activity other than basic survival possible. Yes. And by cutting that away, by having everything be obfuscated into consensus and cooperation and agreement cooperatives and all these different flash words are another way of describing hierarchy yes but in an obfuscatory manner you are taking away from the most basic thing they could ever have representing and seeing the higher yes it's it, it's also just a lie yes it's also uh, anti-hierarchy stuff is just lies it's just management speak as you said you can't get around the fact that there are people who lead and people who follow mm. in all organizations in all aspects of human endeavor there are people who lead and people who follow and you have to be capable of doing both yes <laughs> and that really is it but um ah the the next the next aspect of the of the right wing positive vision is something that a lot of people focus on uh, but I, I don't think they really talk about it in a a total way which is trust safety and civility it is the nebulous idea that people used to be better. It's the high trust society. It is it is the result of the bonds that bind people together, but it is more than that. It is, I think, almost like a mental space. Mm. It is once you have bonds with people and once you have hierarchy and the bonds intertwine with that hierarchy, it is much more likely that you will trust people, that you will be safe, and that you will be civil. Well, let's, let's go even further back to a society wherein even your involvement in it predicated upon your constant presence at, at ritual, at ceremony, you know, domestic practices. And bearing in mind that you can't just leave your home. Yeah. You have no right to stand on another person's land other than the fact that you both have this sort of entity or god of the path in your own home that you worship and that your name is beholden to that who you are as a person is beholden to that you can't go and commit a crime because you'll be extricated from your own family and you will actually become a non-person who will not even be taken into any form of society because you've been told fuck off yeah you you it's the whole idea of yes the outlaw is free but he's an outlaw yes <laughs> the law doesn't account for him anymore he has no protection under it we're all outlaws now yes and that's, everyone wants to be an outlaw they think it's cool but when you're all outlaws no one has anything well, that's anarcho tyranny it's, yeah, it's all it these is. same phrases we revolve around but in a society where there was a great burden put upon people just to get on with one another the results of those people then turning around and having criminality with one another is so much smaller because the consequences of doing so are not just a case of sort of socially being judged but are actually life and death well as far as we did uh poverty doesn't cause crime as a stream but as far as we can tell modernity causes crime the conditions yes. of modernity cause crime we want to reduce reverse change and in many cases detonate the conditions of modernity and we believe by doing so that we will turn this into reverse this graph here that we show which is the incredible the uh, quintupling of crime between 1900 and 1950 and it then doubled again and it then doubled again <laughs> and then we're told it came down but well, it never did <laughs> well a large part of this is also the fact that we started to in much greater numbers import alien european societies into britain gypsies jewish people Poles, whatever other ethnic group decided to make its way into britain you know, at the end of the victorian era they formed their own little enclaves, their own little gangs, and they didn't respect our culture. 
A part of it was that. The other part of it was just, again, the dissolving. I, I mean, there's like combining yes. effects. Oh, yes, yes, yes. But I'm just saying that adding to the fact that the, all of the traditional aspects of society that we thought about as being attacked by the 19th century, but we're standing at a very low base here, uh, were completely detonated by the creation of mass society. We don't talk about, in our, in our normal histories, the revolution of mass and scale, because the revolution of mass and scale is as important as the Industrial Revolution. It is as important to the conditions we find ourselves in as the Industrial Revolution is in a social sense. And what we're seeing here is the crime explosion from the revolution of mass and scale. Well, what, what are you seeing in that graph is man, the social animal, breaking down and becoming something else. Yes, he is. And, and our vision is that, we, that this happened... It can unhappen. It can unhappen, but I don't think it unhappens through a pleasant process. No, um, but the uh, the big thing is that we are, as we'll go we'll go into this. We are not conservatives. No, we're not people who believe in things like incrementalism. But it's it's very it, well, to to get what what seems like a very very basic set of conditions requires action outside of the current political system there, that allows. Isn't there almost a, a, a fantastic irony and the people who sometimes are the biggest advocates for a positive vision, some sort of view that we have to give people which can invigorate them with some sort of spirit, are the same people that want to involve themselves in ideas of reform yes. and incrementalism. Yes. They have become so naive about what politics truly is that they believe they can take the machine over and make it do their bidding. You will not have time to implement your positive vision because you're going to spend 25 hours a day making sure the thing doesn't just crumble under your feet. Yes. There's no time for a positive vision. And this is our point. The world we want, visions we would want to put forward, just can't be achieved with what we have before us. No. It's just not feasible. But the... the it says a ne- the idea of the Hydra Society. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. That was a great one. He, uh, 10 quid super chat from Silly Sausage. He just says, hen low. Hen low, Silly Sausage. Hen low. Hen low. But <laughs> it's, it's what AA talked about with Trumpton in many ways. Yes. It's what I kind of consider in that what people miss about the past is like being in their grandmother's front room. It's being in a safe place... With a, you know, with a slow pace of life, we're going to the pace of life in a bit, it is being in somewhere where you can relax. And people don't have that metaphysically or spiritually. Mm. Um, in modernity, and, <laughs> and take, take this as you will, because I do mean it, in modernity, people feel they can never relax. Yes, no, that's true. <laughs> I mean, we are, we are always being... Subject- can we get some never relaxes in the chat, please? But we are always being subjected to... New stimuli, yes. new information. Here's another thing to be anxious about. Here's another problem that needs to be solved. I mean, I think that was a, a large part of the thing that put AA off quite a lot of stuff, really. Is he put forward the idea of, a look, we can have Trumpton, and it'll be, it'll be beautiful, it'll be traditional, it will, you know, have within it its own little culture that fully trusts and is sure of itself, and it will allow people to flourish outside of it. But in doing so, he said to people, well, you might have to give up your phone. And they all turned around and said, uh, no, I can't do that. Yes. Um, apologies if everything's hitting the noise gate. Uh, I think I put the mic in the wrong place. But yeah, um, I, I, I try and make sure that stays there. It is, I think a lot of it is the rate of change, though, as well. It is this idea that you don't have a stable society. Um, yeah, you, you can't afford to relax. Yeah, but no mobile phone. Yeah, people people aren't... The thing is, people aren't willing to do things themselves that mm. would create this. If they no. were, it would exist. Well, the, people will not vote... People will not vote for someone who will better them. They will vote for someone who will dope them up with, you know, affirmations that make them feel like they're free. Oh, thank you for the five pounds there. Um, Lewis Shaw Moffat, he says, The past was not... Uh, sorry. The past was not safe, nor will the future be. What we uh, have is each other, and that may be enough. Well, yes, it, things will never be truly safe, but they will at least be more sensical. Things will make more sense. But 
it, the what people want is a space where they can relax. They want the madness to end for a second, and they want to be able to sit down and take stock of things. And that hasn't happened for most people for their entire lives. And I think as well, they they miss a lot of the basic capabilities that would allow to do allow them to do that in a different situation, because they are devoid of any spirituality whatsoever, even in a basic form. And I don't mean knowledge of spirituality or engaging even with something like a church i mean more yes the, the character you have within you as someone who truly feels a spiritual connection to either a certain practice a certain craft a certain location or even just the land itself or the people you live with that is that's not easy to grasp especially in the world we have today um, no, it is not easy to graph. And it's really, the thing is, people don't know that this is what's wrong with the world. Mm. They don't know that they're missing this because they've not had it. The, the problem that they have is that they are bombarded by this and it overwhelms them. It's why so many people have anxiety. It's why so many people take SSRIs. It's why so many people feel that they cannot handle life even though all they're doing are lots and lots of little things enforced upon them. Yes. It is removing the idea that you have to engage with politics, you have to engage with a news cycle. It fundamentally changes your experience of life. A lot of people go, well, that sounds boring. But there has to be places where the pace of life is static almost, where it is slow. Places that do not change generation to generation. Those places have to exist and what now that they have stopped existing we found why they have to exist yes um it's because if they don't exist people go insane well, it I've, completely destroys them metaphysically and spiritually and mentally well i've, I've i think uh, part of the section you were going to get up a painting by one uh, matthew stoat uh, oh, who oh, we I was... are coming to know somewhat via twitter I, and there was a kind of point I was going to make in relation to a painting, because obviously a painting doesn't change. No. And that's, I think, maybe one of the most satisfying things about a painting. Yes. You can stare at it all day and it doesn't change. No. Well, the, and everything around us used to be like that. Everything was a painting. The landscape around you stood the way it stood for decades and never changed. And that, that's so rare and fleeting these days. Well, it also brings on a point. This is one of our additional points. I was going to bring it up at the end, but I'll bring it up now, which is that we believe in beauty. We believe in... That's why we're, you know, quite good friends with Alison Adams. He sent us some lovely stuff. Thank you again, Mr. Adams, if you're yes. seeing this. You uh, know, we, we get I on would, quite well with Mr. Stoat. I would recommend people go look at some of the stuff on his website, which I believe he's revamped and has made accessing some of his work a lot easier. But yes, thank you, Mr. Adams, for the prints. We will yes. hang them up one day. Look up Alexander Adams' artist on Google and you'll just you'll find him. He's a, he's a great artist. And so is, so is uh, Mr. Matthew Stoat. But that's why we try and collaborate and talk to the art scene. Why, you know, Alexander Adams was at Nomos Birmingham. That's why... We, th we think that beauty is extremely important. That's why I've been using the English countryside mm. to backstop this, because as twee as it sounds, the English countryside is very comforting, well, especially so, on, a, on a summer's day. Well, that's what I mean. It's a painting. It never it changes. It, it, yes, and it should be. England should be in large parts a painting. It should never change, because it is beautiful, and once something is beautiful, once you look at something and go, this is beautiful... Why would you destroy it? I mean, there was one of the things I thought about for a while when talking with some of the art people, and I think because I'm not one who takes to art straight away, it kind of really spoke to me. And they said, look, there is no need to go out there and make based art. No. Because art that truly speaks to beauty or heroism or even something that is horrifying will be inherently based yes because it speaks to the world it speaks to as you say that view of england as a painting so that when you paint it it's there before you it's already you don't have to give it a based symbology on top because it already is now uh, the the big reason i think is that people don't think that the right has a positive vision even though it's like throw a dart mm. it's like we are going to stop the bad things we we have the power to stop the bad things from happening we can just do good things. Yes. And it takes somebody with will, and it takes somebody who is able to wield power, and that is, is part of the vision. But 
what I would say is that people don't see that because all, and I mean all conservative visions, are visions of slow death. They do not have a positive vision because they don't have a vision period. And what most people perceive as a right is not us. We are a very strange, in many people's conception, mutation of what they think of as the right because we are a pre-modern right. We are right-wingers from the 17th century. We aren't right-wingers from the, the 21st century. And so we're not conservatives. But the reason that there has been a dearth in people's minds of what a positive vision can be is, one, they're steeped in incrementalism. They're steeped in the ideas of, well, who can I vote for? You're blackpilled if you won't give me someone to vote for. If that's your opinion, like, leave. Yeah. Honestly, don't come to our channel. Don't talk to us. Don't fucking look at me, okay? <laughs> if you want me to tell you who to vote for, you're an idiot and you should leave. You should not be here. You have no business here. And I have no respect for you, frankly. Um, that's that, We are not people who deal with platitudes. We are not people who deal with false hope. And this is why the vision is as it is. This is not a vision of slow death. We will not sell you an alternative po uh, politician. We will not sell you a 5% tax cut. We will not sell you a changing of the window dressing of the machine. What we are here to sell you is... What sounds very basic, but in being so basic, is an incredibly radical vision. It is a vision of a different world. Not of an incrementally different world, but of a totally different world. Yes. I mean, I think we we can almost come back round to Bowden here. And I, I sort of, sort of, slyly, but sort of offhandedly, but still kind of meaning it, commented on somewhere earlier on the fact that Bowden is probably the last great Britain. Yes. He's probably the last truly great man that this country might ever produce. Yes. Maybe there'll be more Bowdens one day, and we should possibly get down on our knees and pray for that more than anything else in the world, to be honest. But as you say, to, to embody not only the want for things to be better, but the things to be drastically different and also, you know, better doesn't even come into it anymore because no. you're comparing apples and oranges. You know, I think you, you sort of suggested, oh, we are, we are right-wingers from three or four hundred years ago. I think we're that, and we're also ones from two hundred years ahead. <laughs> it's and all of these the, things... The problem is that we are smashed in between these two points. All of we these We see things. the way we got here, we can see the ways out, but we just were too far away from either end to reach them. So we are only here really to speculate what the possibilities might be who poo any nonsense ideas that stop that process coming around at the turn of history. Yes. And otherwise, survive. <laughs> well, you mentioned Bowden, so I'll give him a quick... Let's have a quick clear them out, guys. Clear them out. Clear them out. Clear them out. You've got to clear them out. You've got to clear them out as well. I, I, I want to see clear them out in the chats. I want to see clear them out in the chat, guys. Come on. But now the... <laughs> The other one I want to get onto, it's not a full topic, because we've got a, a limited amount of time left here, but... The, the Holy Mountain is, I one think, one of my best essays. I, I'm very proud of it. I have no idea how I wrote it. You helped quite a lot. Thank you in cleaning that up. But that is a vision I have, really, of... It sounds lofty, but giving spirituality back to man. It, it is the sacred in the face of the profane. Yes. It is a sacred place that within it has its own sacred spaces inside it. And these don't just have a, a meaning and sense of a people, but then there's an esoteric meaning further within it. And I think that's a large part of it, again, that Bowden talks about. He has a positive vision for the right, but it's not one that you could explain to people on the streets. And it's what we were talking about right at the start of this stream about looking upwards. Yes. Just, I, I mean, to a certain extent, it, it should just be us saying that over and over again. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, always be looking upwards at something greater than you. Yes. And if you can do that, then we've made it. You know what? I will just actually read the last paragraph of this, because I, 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 I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy reading it. And I, I, I think that this is just what I need to say when it comes to the fact that this is a sacred movement. And a lot of people take issue with that. They, don't, they want us to be specific. They demand that we are Christian. And if you do that, like, fuck off again like go go larp as a church of england minister somewhere else i'm not interested um, but i'll say this purely pragmatic and material ideas are doomed to fail against those with their eyes fixed on the transcendent because of the zealotry of those ideas and still this has been an essential component of any successful movement from the pre-modern age and is only seen as dangerous from a specifically modern perspective 
The widespread apathy and nihilism of the modern age are not accidental and have been instilled in an effective pacification of Western population. Those within a distant movement, which hopes for victory, must have beliefs steadfast within themselves, and any movement that forms around them must take those beliefs as a driving force for their rhetoric and action in a sincere fashion. We build the mountain within and the mountain without. Yes, and I, I think to, to just juxtapose against that and bring it back to some of the more social points we were talking about earlier on, and specifically women, we are up against a vanguard elite that understands wholeheartedly and consciously that spreading mobile phones and social media to the third world will turn them into the same anti-social bug men that they've turned us into. Yes. They, as you say, full well know what they are doing and are consciously imbuing upon us a technical and specialist sort of uniformity within which there is no meaning other than the political identities sort of bestowed upon you to choose from. Well, we'll have a bit of discussion after this. Don't, don't go away, guys. But these, these are our conclusions. And really, our conclusion is about why we don't talk about this more often. Because there's so much more we could talk about. The positive vision for, the, for what is the revolutionary right is huge. Yeah. Because it is not limited to incrementalism. It is not limited to looking within the system. We can imagine anything we want because we are not constrained we are, by we are, modernity. We are ultimately romantics, in yes. a sense. But the problem is that in our current conditions... The positive vision by itself does nothing. Grappling with the issues we see, there is a class of people enforcing most of the issues we face, and they enforce them onto us. The elites must be cycled for the positive vision to even begin to be implemented in most cases. We present what we think can be done under current conditions in our, at our NOMOS events and the related <clears throat> media. Um, and it tackles practical, positive change we think is achievable right now. We are obsessive about talking about that, really, in many cases. These are some of our... But the problem is these are some of our least read and watched works, to the point that people have accused us of never having had a positive yeah, I, vision. I distinctly remember Dave the Distributist doing a thing about this at one point. You know, he, had, he has these streams where he talks to these leftists... And people like ourselves kind of sit there and go, mm, I'm not so sure. But then they rake in thousands and thousands of views and bring in a ridiculous amount of engagement. But then, of course, all the comments he gets are, well, why don't you propose a solution instead of critiquing these people? So he took effort out. He wrote a big essay. And he prepared this big video yeah. essay with all these positive solutions in it. Did anybody watch it? No. I did. I like that one. But <laughs> it's, the, it's the same point you're making here. People, people want to hear about solutions, at least to some extent, Yeah. but the nitty gritty of actually bringing them about and manifesting them in reality, no one wants to care about. Because at the end of the day, the vast majority of people are here to be entertained. Once they're done listening to whatever they're listening to, whether it's Sargon or even AA or even someone like Morgoth, a lot of them will turn it off and go back to playing video games. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of people will turn this off. No, 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 not to be, not to uh, call some of you out, but a lot of people will just turn this off and go back to zoning out. Mm. And to be fair, that's all a lot of people feel I they mean, can do. I, but... I mean, I can't blame you for it. I did it for years myself, and I, I wholeheartedly understand that the comfort that's in that. We what we are trying to suggest that either embrace the discomfort wholeheartedly, or find comfort in something that is. A way to better yourself. Yes. Uh, thank you for the five pounds there, Connie. Current year says I will be releasing something soon on a practical proposal for our sphere in Britain. I, Ooh, I, it's I, not kidnapping kids, is it? I always love to hear it, but uh, uh, no stones to actually <laughs> to actually do some it. Well, the thing is, a lot of people haven't taken the time to consider what they should do. I think that's the main problem: is that people yeah. don't well, really. I mean, someone in someone in the chat there is asking a similar question. He's saying, "Where's the rallying point?" I'm afraid the rallying point is in you. <laughs> it's, it's well, there we've we've been trying to create them with our NOMOS events. We've been trying to create the rallying point within some of the things that we say. But the issue is that yes, it ultimately at first these are personal battles. These are metaphysical battles. These are spiritual battles. But the positive vision for the right currently is the fact that you have to be able to save yourself first. To quote Bowden, you've got to kill the liberalism within. Yes, and that's why, that's why Bowden's rallying cry was clear them out. Mm. That's, why, that's why that became his mantra. Clear them out is really the positive practical vision right now. It's what we talk about. 
Modernity must be defeated. All else is simply theory crafting. The why of why it must be defeated is easy. Evil people are in power and good cannot be done. The positive vision is nice, but ultimately it is a fantasy in the current moment. It's good to have something to fix your eyes on, but what, what you fix your eyes on, I'm afraid, is fiction. This, yes. this idea that our positive vision here, it is just a vision. It is just, and it, it, at some points it can act, again, like its own sedative. Another reason that we don't talk about the positive vision as much as some people think we should is that the negative vision is more energizing and our positive vision is the opposite of the bad things that are happening. It should be implicit when we say, you know, we don't want the cows to die, that in the positive vision of the right, there'll be cows. Yes. <laughs> when we say that we don't want people to be lonely and we want to deatomize people, we want to, we want to put modernity wholesale into reverse, not just incrementalize around it, it should be implied within that that we want to give people back to each other. I, I, again, I don't want to shit on people, but a lot of this, I think, is implicit in our work because we describe the bad, but in doing so, we say it should go away. And really, humanity is quite good at self-governing in many cases. It is quite good once you have a sovereign who can create that space, who can create the basic conditions for people to function, then as communities, they're very good at functioning. Yes, especially if it can be imbued into the participants within that community that they each have a role to play in keeping it healthy, living. Well, it's, it's the whole point that I've tried to make to people. It's like, look, Ankapistan exists within a fascist state. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, that, that, is, that is all it is. Uh, Kony, current year again, another fiver. Our positive vision for the right is a world where the victims of modernity like... Oh, God, no. Yeah. Uh, some weird tranny don't exist and, yeah, whatever. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not reading the rest of that. <laughs> the moo cows are looked after, yes, but, uh, but we're, we're not, we're not going to mention the F word on here. <laughs> As, oh, dear. Oh dear. Um, I know. I, I mean, Joe. I'll say it on your behalf, Mister Coney. Current year, I will. I have put my hand up, and I will do it once again. I want a world where there is less people like me. Yes. I would see that as a positive sign. <laughs> if I cannot be taken at face value saying such a sentence, then I will be disregarded forever. But there's the long and the short of it, and I think to a certain extent. That's something we should all put our hands up and say. Not just me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you are being corrected in chat. It's fewer people like you. <laughs> yes, that's kind of funny. Um, what is, this, is this the point where I can mention the fact that I've hardly slept for like the last three no. days? I've allowed a grammatical slip up. You are. You are allowed a grammatical slip up. But um, I don't know. We thank you to all of our members, by the way. I forget to say it, but thank you to everyone who was a member. I see you guys in chat. Anthony Keen, uh, the guy with the with the unpronounceable name I can never say. Oh, it's uh, Velsmiller or whatever. Yeah, uh, Funky I'm... Monk. All, all of you. There's been a lot of people who've been supporting this channel continuously since we turned memberships on, and have been supporting it as a you know as a commenter. And as a member of the community, since we first started the kind of solo experiment, I guess joint experiment with me, you, sometimes Trig, although it was more Trig in the past. There will be more Trig, by the way, don't worry. It's okay, we're from the internet, we'll be back at some point when I have time. We'll be talking about uh, David Dees. Um, but we just haven't been able to get it recorded yet because I've been so busy. So don't worry yes. if you like the me and Trig content please, stuff, that will be continuing. <laughs> please bear with us. We will either... Find a way to reschedule some things, or I will quite frankly find some new motivation and find a way to either write more things or maybe even do some essay stuff that can go up. Uh, thank you very much to the people who've been very generous via the Super Chat stuff uh, this evening. We will make sure that gets spent on many Theakstons. Yes. And thank you to the people who just turn up to the streams anyway, because it's nice to know that there are people listening. Uh, thank you for being part of our Maoist revolutionary reading circle. Yes, and and for those of you who want something else to, to look at, we've, we've, we've linked a few things. Lenny Woe's uh, video is excellent, his speech from Nomos London. But the latest thing on the Substack, uh, who are the normies? People are quite like that. Thank you for all the kind comments on that. And there will be a large amount more on the Substack when I can finish it. There's a lot of stuff that's nearly there on the back end, and I want to do it justice. So I'm hoping at some point to have reliable... 
weekly or even bi-weekly content on the Substack, but at the moment that is a little bit of a pipe dream, but we do, we deliver things to you as soon as they're ready. We don't have a backlog, we don't have a pipeline because I work and, you know, you do the housework, Jess works, and, you know, it's, it's just that we're such busy people. We'd love, we'd love to do more, we'd love to do more, but we... We can't. It does make me a bit sad sometimes, but I, I, I'm glad to be back streaming. I'm glad to be back with you guys. It, it, honestly, I don't do this for any other reason than I feel compelled to. Yes, I mean this is what I, <laughs> this is what I said earlier on today. I, I, we've had we've had the conversation a number of times, thinking about yes, in a number of different ways of kind of stepping back from this or reorientating how we do, it. and I think we've done that a little bit. But ultimately. Even if we're a bit quiet on the odd occasions, we aren't going anywhere because no. really this is a large part of. <clears throat> I, I I hate to admit it, but at the end of the day, a large part of our meaning is derived from doing this stuff online, really. And it's it becomes a lot more potent and a lot more enjoyable when it turns into a real life thing like Nomos stuff. Yes. But we're in a situation where that's not happening. Well, I'll say that the, as much as we rag on online-only stuff, I'll say that another part of the positive vision is the fact that we can deatomize each other. Mm. You can be the person who deatomizes somebody else. You can be the person who makes someone not feel alone anymore. Because I have had... I didn't know... I, I, I found it out years later, but I have had so many messages recently being told that, you know, five years ago, even, you know, eight years ago for some people... I was that person. I was that person who started them on a journey. And I've had people thank me. I've had people very nice. Uh, thank you to all of you who've come to me on that front. But it is what you do and the example you make, if you do it correctly, if you come out and tell people, like, look, the, the world we live in is intolerable to us psychically. We know. and we, we want to do something about it. Even just that makes people breathe a great sigh of relief because they at least know that it's it's almost ubiquitous, I think, when you speak to people properly, that they know that something is wrong, but they feel alone about it. And and as much as we can, it has much more impact in real life, which is why we do real life events. But that is kind of a as much as we can our current mission, which is to to be with each other and to try and be with you guys when capable. So yes. that that if nothing else, take that as our positive vision, which is just a positive vision of friends. That's why we use the frog. That's why we call people friends. We believe this should be a group of friends. Well, I, I think as an extension to my usual closing line, which is go to the pub, I might quickly read a line that's actually in the uh, Deglobalize Your Mind Fair enough. piece we had up earlier on. It's just yes. from the last paragraph. Uh, take all of the three steps above and you will find in short order that being a respectable representative of traditional ideas is easy. Almost no one can resist the allure of a well-dressed individual partaking in a cigar or pipe to accompany one's ale or spirit, who can command a knowledge of classical works and retell great stories of what the world was like before. Those not receptive to such allure need not be considered. Yes. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll have a little bit of outro music, which is uh, its actually me. Uh, if, if you guys are wondering what all the guitar outro music was, that's just me. I've been, I've been doing it. It's me. No, it's... Uh, I, I need to get a better recording set up. Some of this stuff was just recording my phone, etc. But, um, I don't know. I, I've not got much else to say. All I will say is thank you guys for watching and have yourselves a good evening. Yes, have a good night. Uh, we may see you next week. See what happens. We'll see what happens.